So uh, it's been a fun week trying to figure out a program for this afternoon, <laughs> this morning. Um, so thank you to the uh, programs committee for all of that frantic emailing back and forth and for your ability to pivot. So um, saving the day is gonna be Charlie and her community resilience yeah. chat. So yay, welcome. <laughs> Editing the program as I was. She, I totally had this last night, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, I love it. So, um, totally into giving selfishly. I love, this is one of my favorite uh, things to, to present about uh, because I learn and am reminded about things that I need to be reminded of. Uh, community resilience model is uh, was developed by Elaine Miller. And it's really about finding strength in your community during times of trauma, uh, stress. This can be organizational. We teach it to schools. We teach it uh, to like students, teachers, and, and different organizations. So I think we have a presentation next week with uh, one of the tribes. So just to introduce uh, resiliency questions, what or who is helping you through, like right now, what is giving you strength? Um, what or who has helped you through hard times in the past? And this is just a question. It's kind of a thought exercise. Taking a moment to think about the things that get, have given you strength in the past. Uh, resiliency pauses can help you bring you back into a balanced state of mind and body during difficult times. So it's important to remember what else is true no matter what you're going through right now. And you can have things piling up in your mind and you take a moment and say, what else is true? My family's safe. I have a home. I have a job. I have friends, a community. Everybody has a different uh, definition of resiliency. Um, in this case, it's just an individual community's ability or collective strength and living fully with compassion in the present moment and to thrive while managing the activities of daily living. Um, so definitely there's been a perspective shift. I don't know why this is, there we go. Ah. What I do? I broke it already. Vanessa, help. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, there's been a perspective shift with uh, trauma-informed uh, stuff. So the conventional thing was when people were going through stress, it was people who had, you know, depression, anxiety, alcoholism, you know, substance abuse issues. They were bad. They need to be punished. Uh, they don't care. They're just lazy. Um, Trauma-informed um, was shifting to uh, people are suffering. People need effective interventions. Uh, many people care but lack understanding and skills. Uh, Resiliency-informed is more... Uh, Key, um, focusing on people are resilient. What, what strengths do we have? Um, what do we come out of trauma with? So people need compassion as they learn new skills. Uh, any person can learn self-regulation skills based on science. And we need to learn skills of well-being and they can reduce suffering. So again, um, Community resilience skills, uh, just reiterating, it can be learned by anybody. We all have bodies and minds and stress, and we can all learn how to, to learn uh, different skills. So we all have uh, access to the language of our biology. And it's kind of a universal language. When we are mad, everybody's face gets hot. When we are like in love or excited, everybody's chest feels like it's going to explode, right? Like we, we all have this like access to our biological, and it's, it's universal. Um, so creating a common language, uh, the resiliency zone. Uh, so through our day-to-day -day lives, we go through any number of emotions. Uh, we wake up, we're like, oh, what time is it? Uh, you know, maybe we're like, oh, like we're having a great day. We feel full of energy. Um, or, oh no, like I forgot that I didn't pack the kids lunch. It's still, our emotions go all over the place and we might experience any number of these emotions throughout the day. Um, resiliency zone, so we'll talk about the resiliency zone. When we are regulated and we can meet those challenges, we can say, oh yeah, like I'm running out of gas, gotta go get gas, I can do that after work, no problem. Um, 
there are times that we can't meet those stressors. Um, it seems like a, like a hurricane. You're just like, oh no, I don't even have my card on me and I don't know how much money's in my bank. Um, so what we call like the middle is our resiliency zone. We can go with those ups and downs of emotions and, and, and follow through. Uh, and then there's above the resiliency zone and the below the resiliency zone. So above the resiliency zone is too stressful, too much. And we, when we're above it, our biological systems go, we're anxious, we're angry, we're irritable at our loved ones. Uh, we might be, get stuck in the high zone. And on the opposite side, uh, it might be defeating. So we might be depressed or sad or start self-isolating. So that then we might get stuck in the low zone because it's, it's also too much. So again, we're talking about <coughs> biologically, all this stuff happens to everybody. When we get stressed out, our heart, heart rate goes up, breathing, pupils, um, our digestion and saliva. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed that uh, when you're stressed out, you can't make saliva. One of the uh, funny things, like one of the relaxation techniques that I've heard is if you're really stressed out, take a minute and try to make saliva in your mouth. Imagine biting into a lemon because it tricks your body into thinking you're relaxed. <laughs> and then so it actually, and then it has an effect on everything else. Your heart rate will actually go down and your, you know, your blood pressure goes down. So it's, that's and that's what, what we're doing right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so again, this is just uh, talking about how all of us have bodies. Um, so when you're stuck in the high zone, again, you're suspicious, you have nightmares, you're forgetful. You might experience any of these emotions such as guilt, grief, shame, anxiety, um, physical numbness. Uh, low zone is hopelessness, loss of faith, um, you know, isolation, trauma, self-injury. So again, these are very common human reactions. Um, <clears throat> so, so these are just different things that might cause tr trauma, right? So COVID, uh, <laughs> financial housing challenges, jobs, job insecurity, uh, loss of a loved one. But also the community resilience model talks about what else do you find when you, after trauma? So something might be resilience you might find out how strong you are. You might find out that the thing that you thought was gonna end the world didn't end the world. Um, you might find gratitude for those around you. You might find that you have a bigger community than you realize. Um, your friends come to your, to your aid, forgiveness. Some people get you know stronger faith, religious faith or grounding. Um, so this is really um, a, a core value of the community resilience model is what else is true after a traumatic event or after a moment of, of digging deep for resilience? Um, what else is there? So, <clears throat> so again, uh, this is the model is talking about tapping into your biological processes and kind of being able to hack your system. And I don't know how much time I have, but um, and I'm kind of going quick through it. But this is a program that I welcome and encourage anybody who's interested in bringing this to an organization to, to invite uh, me or First Five to, to give this presentation. Um, so again, we all have storms in our body, sensations of discomfort and pain, and, and knowing that those are natural rhythms, we all have them and they, they come and they go. Uh, neuroplasticity is the lifelong uh, capacity for your brain to change and rewire itself. Um, I'm definitely like a, a huge advocate for, for change. Like people, you know, I deal with kids and, and parents who are feeling hopeless all the time. And so this is one of the things that I think is, is really important because um, they're just like, they feel stuck. And I'm just like, yeah, they, they just don't know this skill yet. And it's, they're just like, and their kid's completely different. And the kid's dysregulation will dysregulate the parents. And you have two people screaming at each other. And the mom is saying, this this kid's always like this. And the kid's like, well, my mom always, and it's like, no one always does anything. <laughs> you guys are dysregulated and you guys are dysregulating each other, like, you know, getting you, you, each other out of that resilient zone and, you know, going up and down. So biological interventions. 
So again, um, these are just different um, stressors. So what is toxic stress? So too much, too fast. So maybe you just have a lot of work. Maybe it's the pandemic where it was like, you have to isolate, you have to go to the grocery store and be prepared to, isolate, you know, uh, too little for too long. So maybe that's poverty or um, food insecurity um, and then too much for too long. So the skills that we talk about are grounding exercises, resourcing, uh, tracking, gesturing, and then shift and stay. In the first presentation, we usually go over the first three. Um, What's a grounding exercise? A grounding exercise. So uh, one grounding exercise, um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I haven't looked at these slides for a while. So <laughs> a, grounding, a great grounding exercise. So you bring yourself into the present. Um, so you're just finding yourself a little bit elevated. Um, you name five things in the room that you can see. You go, oh, there's a chair. It's made of wood, it's got like four, whatever. And then uh, you, know, you might say, so name five things, put it in as much detail as possible. Uh, fourth thing, and then you look at uh, four things you can touch. So I'm like touching the table. I can feel the ground. I can, you know, my jacket against my skin. Um, and then you go three things that you can hear. And then uh, two things that you can smell. So maybe it's, you're like, I don't know. I'm good. <laughs> All right. And then, uh, and then one thing that you can taste. So whatever that is, um, you might be able to, you know, take a, a sip of coffee. But that tapping into your biological system and what is real and what is present right now. And there's all kinds of different grounding exercises like that, um, where you can just name your basic information. You can say, you know, what, what is true about me right now? I'm standing in front of Rotary. Uh, these, these are my friends right here. Name what's true right now so that you're not thinking too much about the future and everything that's going on or everything that could happen or would happen. So that's a, that's a great um, way. So tracking is also a, it's a beginner step. It's a, a Tracking is noticing or paying attention to sensations on what's happening inside your body. So when you're up in front of people and you haven't prepared for a presentation really, uh, you know, yeah, I'm a little bit nervous, it's okay, like that's normal. Um, but yeah, and there's, there's way to, ways to practice and we do this with kids uh, and adults um, and learning language. So we might ask people, you know, grab something on the table and hold it and try to describe it and use as many adjectives as possible. Smooth, cold, warm, um, bumpy. Uh, and, and so it's really getting people to, to notice their body sensations and, and how to, again, um, address them in a healthy way. So what we pay attention to grows. So another thing is if your shoulder hurts or you feel like you're you're anxious or your, your stomach's in a knot. Another grounding exercise is scanning your body and saying, what doesn't hurt? What isn't anxious? And like, mm, sometimes it's really hard for people, but other times we're like, oh yeah, I guess it's like technically the back of my elbow doesn't hurt. <laughs> like, yeah, right? I mean, it could be the smallest thing. Um, and that is another way to ground. Um, determining if the sensation is pleasant unpleasant or neutral, what do you notice inside? Um, sitting with and finding that, that neutral sensation is really important, being able to find something neutral within yourself. So this skill number two is resourcing. With, with everybody, um, resourcing is a real or imagined place, person, or thing um, that makes you feel calm, peaceful, or resilient. So that might be a memory, that might be your dream vacation. Um, and so we have people take a moment and either write down or think about something that makes them feel calm at ease. And resourcing is very magical. I don't know if you guys have seen a fight club. There's a part where it's like, where's your happy place? That's actually a real exercise where he sees the penguin going through, you know, <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a real exercise. Um, because when you imagine something pleasant, your brain does not know the difference between reality and an imagined thing. 
So if you are in a high stress situation and you think like, oh yeah, I remember like, oh, just like sitting there on the beach and like, or I was in Alaska and we were just like matching the glaciers, your body, go, your body goes, oh yeah, I remember that. And it actually will calm down your parasympathetic nervous system. So that's another um, technique that we teach in this um, training. Uh, typically, we would do a resourcing exercise, we'd share. <laughs> we also have uh, questions for kids. What's your favorite pet? You know, it's a great, you know, I have a kid that's overstimulated and, I'll, and they don't want to talk to me. I'm like, oh yeah, what, what are your hobbies? Like, oh, yeah, I like to, like, oh, really cool. Like, what do you like to draw? Where do you skateboard? Do you, do you street skate or do you go to the park? Go, oh, I don't really like, oh yeah, it's kind of a, like, you know, but what trick are you learning? And it gets them out of whatever they are. Um, and so, you know, that's just kids resourcing. Um, again, grounding exercises. Um, that's just another exercise we, we talk about. And this is more of a, a meditative kind of thing um, where we'll, we'll walk people through um, a grounding exercise altogether. I don't know if anyone has done the, um, the uh, compassion meditation that's very, very similar to that. Um, but yeah, just laying on a surface and finding your neutral, your neutral spot. Another thing we do is help now. So these are just times when you're just in the office, you can do any of these things at any time. You can count backwards from 10. Um, you know, kids who can't sleep, I tell them count backwards from 100. Call me back if you can't go to sleep. You're never gonna call back. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Uh, listen to the sounds, push against the wall, touch furniture again, just getting uh, rounding techniques, feel the temperature, uh, go for a walk, drink some water. So again, these are the five or six uh, techniques we usually teach. We usually teach those first three. Um, in the first set series, the, the grounding, the resourcing, and the help now. And then in the second um, training, we'll do gesturing, shift and stay, and tracking is kind of the foundation of all of them. So um, right now, it's just how am I focusing my attention during difficult times? Uh, negative times, uh, negative thoughts keep uh, reoccurring. I send emails or posts on social media out of fear. I complain or seek blame. Um, and then moving to the resilient zone, identify resources and track. I focus on my sensations of well-being. I ground, identify sensations connected to my emotions and thoughts. So again, our thoughts control our emotions. Uh, and we, we can control our thoughts sometimes. We can control our, you know, our bodies making spit in our mouth or, um, and then moving into, I can remind myself uh, our resilient zone. We're all into this together. I can practice my skills of well-being. I'm grateful. I have compassion for others, myself, and uh, for myself and others. Um, so, and just as a an ending thing, we always end our, our trainings in what are you doing to widen your resilient zone? Um, what can you do differently to embark on a better self-care plan? And write an encouraging statement to yourself. I, I really like this model because it does connect. Your, your body and your mind and your thoughts together. If you can kind of hack one. So if you're imagining something pleasant, you can do that. Uh, so, and then, or if you can mix fit in your mouth for, you know, a minute, you can do that. Another one, you know, and this is not in this program at all, but one that uh, I've shared with a lot of people is there's a, a cold ice water bath because sometimes you're so amped up, no matter what you do, no matter how many times you practice meditation, um, or something you find yourself over stimulated. You find yourself awake at you know two o'clock in the morning. You're like, this is not right. I can't do it. I'm I'm struggling right now, and I would do anything to go to sleep. And you can't. You tried all the things. Um, one of the you know biological hacks that that I shared is you get a big bowl, fill it with cold water, throw some ice in it. It's really weird, but you put, and you put your face in. You put your face in as deep as you can. Hold your breath for as long as you can and come out. Do that a couple times. It's the weirdest thing, but it actually uh, stimulates your vagus nerve. So it shuts down, like it, again, your heart rate goes down, your blood pressure goes down. And I, the first time I tried it, I couldn't sleep. I was like, oh, this is, this is ridiculous, <laughs> but I'll try anything right now. And I tried it and I was like, this didn't work. 
went back to bed. Next thing I knew, I was waking up. So anyways, um, that was just an introduction to the community resilience model. Um, if anybody's interested in a presentation for their organization, um, please let me know. Any questions? Is there, what's the website or I saw an app on the phone? Oh yeah. Um, individuals or? Yeah. So there is, a, it's, I think it's Help Now. That's a, a yeah, no, iChill. The iChill app is really great. So it will, it's very, very simple. You'll say, it'll give you, how are you feeling in your resilient zone on a scale of one to 10? And you're like, oh, like I, uh, scale of one to 10, if one is fantastic and 10 is I'm dying, and you're like, I'm an eight. You can pick one of the skills, they'll walk you through it, and then they'll test you again. You're like, oh, wait, I'm like a five. And it's really cool because you can actually track your own biological nervous system while using these skills. And then the community resilience model yeah, is just still the same. Anybody else? Do you have family members that can benefit from this but aren't part of like a big group to be trained? Like, how do people access this, these kinds of resources if they're just, say, you had a teenager who could really benefit from? Yeah, absolutely. This is, uh, it is definitely like sharing things with clients and being like, yeah, and I have the same, I have the opposite question. I was talking to a parent yesterday, and she's like, why aren't they teaching this in schools? <laughs> like, so it's just funny. Like, it's, uh, yeah, I get the questions both ways. But yeah, it, it is really hard. A lot of this stuff is typically um, learned in therapy or counseling. I know that they're trying to integrate it into the school systems. Um, there is, a, so DBT, uh, Dialectical Behavioral Therapy, you can look at that kind of stuff on, and, and those kind of skills online. Um, there's a woman called, uh, named Ursula White said, I'll get back to you on that name, but she has a, um, a lot of these skills that, you know, uh, anyone can look up and kind of like, and she teaches you how to introduce them to somebody one-on-one, -on -one. so if it's a family member or friend. Um, uh, yeah. So, but yeah, it is, it's like this weird, it's not a secret, but it's a secret because people don't talk about being dysregulated. We all show up every day and it's like, no one knows. We're like, oh, how are you doing? Great. How are you? And then we keep going. Um, so, and that's part of that, this program too, is starting to use the language being like, oh yeah, like I'm a little bit out of my resilience zone. Like, you know, I'm just like a little bit edgy, like be honest. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Because like empathy and connection, like that will regulate you. Like, yeah, me too. Like, cool. like mm -hmm. a shared experience of like people being like, oh, like so and so looks like a really good presenter. They look super calm. I'm like, I know I've heard people say that. I'm like, I'm back up here. I will not remember the word I said. <laughs> um, okay. Any can other I questions? Absolutely. Rebecca, can you remind me? And I'll send this to you. Charlie did come into one of my classes last year and did this with like thirty-five kids, and it went. Really well, they really appreciated it, especially just like the last six weeks of school. Seniors, all time stress levels were high. It was it was amazing, and the kids responded really well. Thank you again. Thank you.